Good evening, this is Cecilia with Kentucky Rose Devotionals, where we're looking for the roses in the Word of God. You can see I've got my sidekick, Mr. Bentley, um, behind me here. Uh, today's his birthday. He turned four years old today, so he thinks he's a big shot. Um, but anyway, we're so glad that you're here with us today. We hope that you're having a blessed day in the Lord. If not, then maybe this uh, will encourage you as we're continuing our ascent up the mountain to get to the Lord, to get to His presence. And hopefully you have been using these Ascent Psalms to read them, to encourage yourself that no matter what area, what level you feel like you are traveling um, to get to Jesus, that you are you are getting to Him. You're getting to Him through your prayer life. You're getting to Him through your praise life. Um, you're getting to Him through that, that special time that you're spending with Him, just you and Him. So today we're going to dig into Psalm 127. Yesterday we did 126, which was kind of our, not really our halfway point yet, but we're getting close. Um, but we're looking at this joyful return that we had yesterday. A return, a return to the things of God, a return to the things of the Lord, um, that he brought them out of that captivity, and that he is bringing them into a season of laughter, a season of singing. And I don't know about you, but all the things that my family has faced in this last year, we're ready for a season of laughter. We're ready for a season of singing. And I believe that that's what we're on the, the very, we're right at the door, knocking at the door um, to see what God is wanting wanting to do in our heart and in our life. That revival is around the corner. I believe it's already breaking out in many places and I'm ready to see that revival break out here in, in this area where we live and in many other surrounding areas. I believe God's people are ready. I believe they're hungry and they're thirsty and I believe those that are hungry and thirsty God promises that he will fill them. So there's great things that we found yesterday in the word of God that the Lord does great things for those who love him those that are called according to his purpose so as we sow in tears he's telling us that we're going to reap in joy we're going to reap the joy of the lord and so um, and then we talked about the wave offering we talked about bringing in the sheaves um bringing those those offerings to the lord sharing with the lord giving the lord all that we have all our all our mind our body our strength um, to do everything that that he is desiring us to do so let's look at Psalm 127. Psalm 127 is, is laboring and prospering in the Lord. And this one was written by King Solomon. So King Solomon, of course, we know what he did with the Lord. He was asking for wisdom, right? He could have had anything. The Lord asked him, what would you have me bless you with? And Solomon asked for wisdom. Okay, we know that that wisdom guided him and directed him to make some really wonderful choices, but we also know that he um, got off track um, in, in the middle of his life, and on almost to the very end of his life, he got off track because he got um, into idol worship of his wives. So, you know, who we connect ourselves with, who we surround ourselves with will determine what kind of course um, we're, we're walking on, what road we're walking on with Jesus either to stay on that road or to get pulled off. And so Solomon allowed those wives that were not equally yoked with him, they were wives that were from other um, places, and they were not wives that believed in Jehovah God. And so they got him off course. They got him wanting to worship the things that they worship. And then God really wasn't the, the true uh, love of his heart as it was when he first began and how God blessed him and blessed him with wealth, blessed him with with all kinds of things, wisdom. And so in that, he wrote some wonderful, wonderful wisdom in Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, um, and, and even in the book of Psalms, wrote some beautiful songs and, and shared his wisdom with those who would, who would listen. And, and the people were amazed by that. And God blessed him because he had a covenant with David. So because of that covenant, because of that covenant that goes all the way back to Abraham, he remained faithful to Solomon, even when Solomon didn't remain faithful to him. I do believe that Solomon there at the end got to thinking and he started to come back and and come back to the Lord and remember the things that were really important. You know, sometimes we can get pulled off track. But he, he realized at the end of his life that he, he said in Ecclesiastes that life is just a vapor. We're here and then we're gone. And so I think he, he kind of came to the meaning of life finally when he got to the end. And it's a shame that he missed out on that um, and got pulled away. But it can happen. It can happen to any of us at any time. 
um, but thank God that he is faithful. And, and that's what this psalmist is telling us about. It's telling about God's mercy for us. And it's also telling about God's power. And I love the first the first words here. Unless the, the Lord builds the house, at verse 1, they labor in vain who build it. You know, there are a lot of people who are building their lives on a lot of things. And it's not on God. And so because they've built their life, they think, and they, they feel secure. They may, they may feel really secure in what they've built their life on, that they, everything's fine and everything's going great. And I think that's one of the things that the devil will give people who aren't building on Jesus. He will give them a life of ease. He will give them a life where it seems like, well, I don't need anything. I don't need God. I don't need anything. I'm, I'm just, I'm fine. And in reality, everything they've built their life on is nothing but sinking sand. So Solomon is giving us his wisdom here, his godly wisdom, saying that unless the Lord builds your house, unless you have built your foundation on him, um, you built whatever you built has been built in vain. It's it's not going to go anywhere. And the same thing is true with with our church. You know, our church. If Jesus isn't the center of it, if people aren't coming in to be saved, you can have all the programs you want. You can have all the things that you can do, man made things, and you can draw a crowd and you can get the numbers. But what do numbers matter if you aren't drawing people to know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior? And people aren't if people aren't being saved, you can have all the numbers in the world. But but in the reality of things, as Solomon is telling us here, unless we build our heart and our life and our family and our church around the Lord and that He build it up, the Bible says if, if we lift Him up, He will draw the men unto Him. So as we do that, we're going to see great things happen. He says, unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. You can't protect your family from everything. You can't protect yourself from everything in life. But there is one who can protect us. He is our shield and our defense. And even in suffering, even in sickness, he will still be with us and walk with us to the very end. He said, it is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late. To eat the bread of sorrows. You know, he's telling us worry does us no good. There's no reason to worry if you know who you belong to, is there? When you belong to Jesus Christ, you don't have a reason to worry. You don't have a reason to fear. Because you know whatever happens to you, you are secure in your salvation in Jesus Christ. So he's telling us don't lose sleep. He said, for he gives his beloved sleep. Do you know God wants you to have rest in him? He wants you to have peace in him today. He wants you to have comfort. He wants you to have joy. He wants you to be able to lay down at night and have sweet sleep. And that's something that, that here lately for me, I don't know about anybody else, but it comes very difficult to sleep at times because your mind can be so full of all the things. And it can be good things. It can be things of God that you're thinking about. It can be your family that you're concerned for and that you're praying that you have a burden for them. I know I wake up a lot in the night and sometimes I don't know why and I'll just, I'll just go pray. I'll get up, I'll go in the prayer closet and I'll start praying for whoever I can think of or whoever the Holy Spirit lays in my heart to pray for. And I believe that that's the season that we're in right now. We're in a season where God may wake us up for a reason, for someone's life to be spared, for someone to get right with him. You know, all those prayers are so important. And so if God wakes us up out of our sleep, or if we're woken out of our sleep, then I, I find the best way to get back to sleep is to start praying. And when I pray, I get that peace, and I can lay down, and I can have rest. And that's what Solomon's telling us here. You know, there's no reason for you to sit up late and have sorrow and worry, because your beloved shepherd, the good shepherd, he is with us, and he is providing for every need that we have. And I love this verse. As a teacher, I love this verse. It says, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. What does that mean? A heritage. Something that's passed down from generation to generation. If you've taught your children about the Lord, if you've taught them to pray to God, if they've seen your life, if they've seen you keep your promise, because God keeps his promises, if they see that light shining in you, then your children are going to be drawn to that light. They're going to want to follow in your footsteps. They're going to want to follow in the footsteps of, of Jesus Christ if you're living that life before them. If you're not living that life before them, then you're missing out on a wonderful treasure that God is promising us here in his word that, that our children are a heritage. You know, I look at 
I look at my father, and I look at the life that he lived in front of me, him and my mom. But but now that he is he's went on to be with the Lord, I can just look at all the things that he taught me and how proud I am of the things that he taught me, and and how it just makes my heart glad to know that the things that he taught me now that I have taught those to my children, to my son, to my daughter, and now they're they're teaching those things to others, and they're even at my weak moments they're coming to me and encouraging me when I need encouragement so that's the blessing that is the gift that God gives us with with our children if we teach them the word of the Lord then it's not going to return void it's going to continue to give and give and give and we're going to have that heritage that we have you know that that we love our parents and that we love our children and and they're they're going to return that love back to us um and and I saw that you know with my dad for the years that he went through suffering my sister and I my mother were there with him through all of it we wouldn't let him go to a nursing home we wouldn't let him go you know we, we wanted to be the ones to care for him because he took care of us and we felt that was our devotion to get to him to to help him and be there for him when he needed us most there were times that he would have to leave and go to the hospital or be in um, you know some care at different places but as soon as we could get him out and get him home we wanted him home with us because our love for our father uh, was such that we didn't want anyone else overseeing his care I'm, and I can tell you from the last almost seven years of our experience with the health care system it's broken it's a mess <laughs> and most of the care that my dad received didn't help him um, most of it was was not good care there were a few that were that were special people that that really took the extra mile to care and see about my dad but for the most part there was a lot of neglect there was a lot of abuse there was a lot of bad things that were happening in health care and I hate to see that because my dad worked in health care his whole life um, so I hate to see that um, but if you are contemplating you know what to do with your loved one out of your love for them God will give you the strength that you need to care for them and don't let anybody just discourage you from doing that because our system right now is broken and your loved ones need you so you know when God is calling you to do things even though it may look crazy to people and they don't understand you know well how can you give up this or that for this loved one well they would do it for me you know my dad would have gave up everything to take care of me he did um, all my life he took care of me he was there he was faithful for me so you know I can't say you know, I, I didn't want to do that. I, I did want to do it out of honor and love and respect for him. And so when we love and honor people, God will take care of us. He will give us the strength that we need. And can I tell you every day was easy? No, it wasn't. It was it was difficult. And there were times that, that we cried a lot and we asked the Lord to help us. And he was there. He was faithful. So whatever decision you're making with a loved one that you love, Go to the Lord in prayer about it. And don't let people discourage you and tell you, oh, you don't need to be burdened with that or it's not your problem. Well, we have an obligation to take care of our family. And I think if more people were doing it, maybe the health care system wouldn't be so broken. If we would just do what God has called us to do, if the church would just be the church, if we would just do the things that we need to do, there would be other doors that people could go through besides having to rely on all these worldly doors that don't seem to care. Um, but anyway, that's that's my sidebar on that. Um, the fruit of the womb is a reward. God has given you your children as a blessing. How are you treating that blessing? How much time are you spending pouring into that blessing, pouring in to the time that they need with you? A lot of kids are neglected these days. They're neglected and they're babysat by technology. And their parents don't talk to them. They don't spend time with them. They don't even need around the table with them anymore. They're in their room watching TV or they're in their room on tablets and cell phones. And you're not even having conversations with them. So you don't even really know your children. They're doing their own thing. That's not the heritage that God is talking about here. He's talking about bringing your children to be with you. To spend time with them. To find out who they are. Because he says they're like arrows in the hand of a warrior. So are the children of one's youth. They're, they're a special gift that God has given you to pour into, to talk to. And he says, happy is the man that has a quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but shall speak with their enemies in the gate. You know, your children are going to be able to speak the things that you've done. And they know. They know if you're a good parent or not. They know if you're there for them. They know if they can turn to you. 
they know if you're letting them be be babysat by technology and you're not being in their life and being a real parent to them. They know those things. So all these things, you know, it all comes together to, for Solomon to tell us that we need to labor and prosper with the Lord. And that includes our children, that we treat them as a treasure that God has given us and not take that for granted, but that we love them and we see to it that they are getting the best solid education in the Word of God, we're responsible for that. No one else is going to do it if you don't do it. You can't expect your church to do it. You can't expect the school to do it for sure. It's not going to happen there at all. So what they're getting, what the, the trash that is being filtered into their mind, if you're not there to counter it and show them the truth of the Word of God, then they're going to be pulled astray by any and everything. So this is a great psalm to remind us of several things, that children are a treasure, to remind us that the things that we build in life are in vain if they're not built on the solid rock of Jesus Christ. So I hope this will encourage you and help you today to know that the Lord is with you. He is for you. He's not against you. But take that time to pull your children close. Take that time to pull your family close. And let them know that you care for them. That you're there for them. That you love them. That whatever they're facing, whatever they're going through, that Jesus is the answer. He is the answer to everything we're facing. There's no self-help book that can do it. There's no psychiatric help that can do it. There's no doctor that can do it. But Jesus is the great physician. And whatever you have need of today, if you will call on him, he will not disappoint you. And the best thing is, there's no side effects to what he does to us. Praise God. There's only good things that come out of it. So God bless you, and I will see you tomorrow.